Okay, so continuing with the, the more integration idea. So we already talked about in the last video, or I talked about in the last video, when you have to rewrite the sum um, of two quotients, what about when we have to complete the square? So because oftentimes these formulas are still going to be involved where I'm given the inverse trig function after integrating, I put those on top. We learned how to complete the square last year. We used it quite a bit um, when we were talking about parabolas and hyperbolas and ellipses. If you need a quick review on how to do that, please make sure you're touching base with me because um, I am going to go through these examples as if you still know how to do that. So if you need that review, let me know. Um, looking at the first example, I know that if I tried to use u substitution, so kind of looking ahead, I know that if I let du, or excuse me, I let u be the bottom, x squared minus 4x plus 7, it would differentiate and I would have du be 2x minus 4. I don't have a 2x minus 4 and I can't put a variable in. So I'm already anticipating that u substitution won't work. If you can't anticipate it, then maybe you try it and you find out it doesn't work. Same thing. So I need to try something else. I also notice it doesn't match any of these. I also notice that I can't separate this at all because I can only separate the top and put it over the same bottom. I don't have multiple parts to my top. So what if I tried to complete the square? The whole purpose of completing the square is when we cannot factor something. We cannot factor it um, into a squared uh, plus b squared or a squared minus b squared. Because if I could do that, if I could get this to be a squared plus b squared, then I could probably integrate using this formula. So to complete the square, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say my b term is negative 4. So I'm going to do negative 4 over 2. Well, that's negative 2. When I square it, I get 4. So I'm going to rewrite this, so I'm going to have x squared minus 4x plus something plus 7. And I'm trying to figure out what something goes here in order to make this a perfect square. Well, I'm going to start by putting that 4 in there. But if I put a 4 in here, I have to put a minus 4 out here, because otherwise I change my expression. So this is going to be the same thing as saying x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 7 minus 4. Well, what does that give me? Well, what two numbers multiply to give me 4 and add to give me negative 4? Doesn't negative 2 times negative 2 give me 4 and negative 2 plus negative 2 give me negative 4? So this becomes x minus 2 squared plus 3. So rewriting this function, I have the integral of dx all over x minus 2 squared plus 3. Well, this is helpful because now I can say, well, hey, I have something squared plus something squared, where my first thing, my u, is x minus 2, and my a is the square root of 3. And then du is just 1 times dx. So this becomes the integral of du over u squared minus a squared, which integrates to be 1 over a arc tangent of u over a ah, plus c. Well, I know that a was square root of 3, so I get 1 over the square root of 3 times arc tangent of u, which is x minus 2, over the square root of 3 plus c. So even though I wasn't able to integrate it as it was written, once I went ahead and completed the square, I was. Looking at a second example, and there are only two examples, so hopefully this video won't be too crazy long. Um, again, I have my formulas written out here. So I'm supposed to find the area of the region bounded by the graph 1 over the square root of 3x minus x squared, the x-axis and the lines, x equals 3 over 2 and x equals 9 over 4. Well, that's telling me area means integrate. So integrate from 3 over 2 to 9 over 4, the function, 1 over the square root of 3 minus x squared. So again, if I tried to use 
I do need my dx. If I tried to use u substitution and let u equal 3 minus x squared, I'm going to anticipate that d would be negative 2x. I don't have a negative 2x. I can't get a two, an x in there. Um, if I look, this doesn't match really any of my functions because notice that um, I would need to have either a squared minus u Oh, I forgot my x. So this is supposed to be 3x. That makes more sense. Um, so notice it doesn't match one of these because I would have to have an a squared where I do not have any kind of function involved. Well, I don't have just a number here. a is just a constant, so I can't use this because of the x. Um, so what I will do, since I have both an x term and an x squared term is I'm going to try to complete the square because if I can rewrite this to be x plus something squared or x minus something squared, um, that would help me. So completing the square underneath here, I notice that I have a negative on my x squared, so I'm going to divide that out and say negative out here, so that becomes positive x squared, which makes that minus 3x. I'm going to have to put something in here. So I take my b term, which is 3, so I take negative 3 over 2. I square that and I get positive 9 fourths. So that is what I'm going to add in here. But technically, because the negative's out front, it distributes in. So technically, I really added a negative 9 fourths. So in order to negate that so I'm not changing my problem at all, I'm going to add a positive 9 fourths out here. So now this is going to right here, now that I've completed the square, I should be able to find a number that multiplies to give me 9 over 4 and adds to give me negative 3. It's going to be my b here that I divided by 2, so negative 3 over 2. So I'm going to come up with a negative x squared minus 3 over 2 squared plus 9 over 4. So once I change my integral to contain that, then I will have 3 over 2, 9 over 4, 1 over the square root uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put the positive number first. 9 over 4 minus x, there's not supposed to be a square there, minus 3 over 2 squared. And now from here, I notice that this matches this formula right here because my a is going to be the square root of 9 over 4, which is 3 over 2. My u is going to be x minus 3 over 2. And notice that my du is going to end up being just dx. So re, uh, writing that out, a is going to be the square root of 9 over 4, so 3 over 2. u is x minus 3 over 2. <clears throat> du is just dx, or it's just 1. Um, also, as long as I'm changing all this, I'm going to go ahead and change my limits as well. So I'm going to say that when x is 3 over 2, u is 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2, so u is 0 and that when x is 9 over 4, u is 9 over 4 minus 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 6 over 4, which gives me 3 over 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plug all that in, and I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 3 over 4 of du over the square root of a squared minus u squared, which is going to become arc sine of u over a from 0 to 3 over 4. Because I've already plugged in, or because I changed my limits to be in terms of u, I don't have to plug that x minus 3 over 2 back in for u. I can leave it as u. I am, however, going to have to plug 3 over 2 in for a. If I put a 3 over 2 underneath here, that's the same thing as saying 2 over 3. So I'm going to have... arc sine of 2 over 3u from 0 to 3 over 4. Um, and now I need to plug each one in. So I'm out of room on my screen here, so I'm going to sneak it on over here. So I will have, and I'll change colors to see if that helps at all, arc sine of 2 over 3 times 3 over 4 well, I know my, um, to save space, I'm going to do a little bit of erasing. I know my threes cancel, and I know two and four reduce, so I end up with arc sine of one half minus arc sine 
of zero. Well, remember what arc sine is asking me for. It's asking me for my degrees or my rotation. So what rotation between negative pi over two and pi over two gives me a sine value of one half? Well, pi over six does. What rotation gives me a sine value of zero? Well, zero does. So I have negative pi over six over zero, which gives me a final answer of just pi over six.